Hello everyone and welcome back to Now I Know. Now today we are talking about difference between plasma serum and antiserum. Although we have talked about plasma and serum in one of the previous video, but considering you know the pandemic and the the term antiserum, which has become uh, quite familiar to all of us, uh, I get a lot of question. What is the difference between serum and antiserum basically? So I thought let's just have a look at our basics and understand the difference between plasma serum and antiserum. So to understand these terms, let's start with the whole blood itself. You know, the basic uh, understanding of whole blood. When it comes to whole blood, it is made up of formed elements and a liquid portion, right? That means there's a, a portion of cells that there are solid cells and there is a fluid part, uh, portion of the blood because there are cells and there is fluid. The cells that are suspended in the fluid. What do I mean by that? That means it's made of formed element and the fluid portion that is what we call plasma. A very crude uh, definition. Now before we move ahead, here's an important information for you all. An academy has come up with a combat series which is a free combat series for you all to participate. It's a most competitive gamified CSIR net battle where you can join the combat and battle it out in the challenge that is prepared in line with the exam pattern. You also can win exciting rewards after every combat. The first one is happening on 31st January at 2 p.m. The link for the combat is in the description box and it is for free. So to unlock the battle and participate, you can use my code NO10. Remember, it's for free. And also, if you're looking for subscription to have a complete syllabus covered and for the preparation of CSIR net, you can either have an academy's plus or iconic subscription the link is available in the description box you can join in using the link and you can use my code note 10 in order to have 10 percent discount so the cellular portion is 45 percent of the whole blood the formed element makes 45 percent of the whole blood and the rest 55 percent is what is a fluid portion and that is what is plasma okay that's what is blood plasma now, what does this cell portion has? It contains RBC, WBC and platelets. So in this 45%, 99% is RBC and rest 1% is WBC and platelets. Whereas the fluid portion that is the plasma, so this, you know, where this cell po uh, portion is, where, where these cells are suspend suspended, they are suspended in the plasma because how are they going to be in blood you know there has to be some medium or there has to be something in which they are suspended and that liquid portion is the plasma now plasma itself the 55 percent of the whole blood that is plasma is made of water of course that's the uh, you know fluid that forms the base there are some other solutes that are present not going in detail here if you want to know much in detail uh, go back to our previous video where we exclusively talk about uh, in detail difference between plasma and serum. So uh, there are some other solutes and there are certain proteins such as albumins to be specific you know three proteins. Albumins, the job of albumins is to maintain the pH. The fibrinogen, uh, by now we must know about it because we have talked about it multiple times basically it is a very important clotting factor that's how your blood clots and when you have a wound or injury it does not keep on flowing so fibrinogen is a uh, important uh, clotting factor and globulins that's what is our antibodies right which gives us the immunity so this is what uh, whole blood looks like now, so basically here you can see what plasma is plasma is the fluid portion of the blood which contains certain proteins especially we are going to focus on fibrinogen because this is where the difference would come between uh, plasma and serum so this fibrinogen is what is an important clotting factor for clotting of the blood now you see antibodies are present in the plasma right keep this uh, particular point in mind because it's very important in order to understand antiserum now when you take whole blood Let's say, for example, you have taken a blood sample, you centrifuge the uh, you centrifuge the sample and it will separate all the elements that we talked about different portion of the whole blood will separate. The bottom part will be RBC because, you know, it will sit in the bottom because it has the highest density. So the bottom part is going to be RBC and the supernatant, the plasma will be on the top. 
okay the plasma will be on the top because it has the it is the lightest it's the lowest density so the topmost portion or the supernatant is a what plasma is now there is a buffy layer if you have done this experiment in the lab you know there is a thin buffy layer that you would observe in between when you centrifuge the blood sample you will observe a thin buffy layer coat this is where your wbc and platelets lies because the density is um, lower than rbc but higher than uh, plasma so it will be between plasma and rbc so that's how you will see all three uh, major components separated in the centrifuge after the centrifuge so this particular version is plasma and now we know that plasma is what contains fibrinogen it's a liquid portion of the blood but when it comes to serum serum is nothing but plasma devoid of fibrinogen that means it is the plasma which does not have fibrinogen okay so when you take you know how how can we bake it in the uh, lab when you take a blood sample you let it clot it will clot right because it's a normal blood sample which has plasma and plasma would have fibrinogen so it will clot once it clots that means what is the clotting over here briefly clotting is when the fibrinogen that is present in the blood will convert into insoluble threads of fibrin okay so the fibrinogen will form a clot it will convert into insoluble threads of fibrin so now it has clotted and you will have a uh, you know like you have you if you have seen uh, even when you have clot sometimes if you press the clot and all i know it might sound gross but you'll have some sticky liquid coming out and that's what is serum after the clot so once you have clot form the liquid that will be separated is what is serum so the serum because the fibrinogen has now been converted into insoluble fibrin and it has formed a clot the serum does not have fibrinogen so basically serum is plasma but it doesn't have fibrinogen i hope this is easy to understand i hope i it's not confusing so how can you make serum in the lab how can you have separated serum in the lab take the whole blood let it clot let it just sit down don't add any anti clot clotting agent just let it clot once the uh, clotting has happened centrifuge the sample the clot will sit at the bottom and the top supernatant that you will get is what is serum okay and if you see here we are just talking about plasma and serum that means we are not separating anything else basically the difference is only with the fibrinogen and i said that you know the plasma does have antibodies in it so we are just separating fibrinogen that means plasma has antibody yes as well as serum also has antibodies a big yes so plasma and serum they both have antibodies this is also one of the question that i uh, get that ma'am is there antibodies in serum as well yes plasma and serum both contains antibodies now comes an interesting part we are talking about anti serum now the anti serum to be very like you know just to keep it very simple anti serum is nothing but it's serum only which contains antibodies now you'll be like you just said ma'am serum has antibodies and now you're saying anti serum has antibodies how is that how is it that different i'll tell you so what happens in case of anti serum the antibodies that are present in anti serum is specific antibodies against a specific antigen that you want to target when we uh, separated the serum it is just we are taking a blood sample and we are just separating it whatever antibodies are there it will be there in the serum but in case of anti serum we are targeting certain antigen we are making specific antibodies we want certain antibodies to be present in the serum why and all i'll just come to it in a moment so anti serum is serum that contains specific antibodies against our antigen of interest for example if you take like let's say for example i want antibody against a specific antigen i want to treat some patients for certain antigen for certain virus for certain infectious agent so i want antibodies against specific antigen what we will do is in lab you take antigen against what you want antibody so you take a specific antigen you inject it into rabbit 
think about it you inject antigen into rabbit what this rabbit uh, rabbit's immune system will do immediately it will produce antibodies against this antigen because it's a foreign antigen it's an it's something non uh, you know it's something from outside of its own system so it's an antigen for the rabbit and as a defense against it it will make antibodies against this specific antigen now we will isolate this antibodies that are produced from the rabbit right so we'll isolate these antibodies from the rabbit and that this rich concentrate the rich solution in which these specific antibodies are present is what we call antiserum you see what we did we we took the antigen against which we want to produce antibody we injected into rabbit so of course poor rabbit will form antibodies against this particular antigen we isolate these antibodies in a concentrate solution make a concentrate solution that's what is anti serum right so this is what came in very handy and we were experimenting with uh, this particular concept uh, in uh, treating coronavirus where we were uh, isolating the serum from recovered patient because you know they were already exposed with coronavirus so we were assuming that they would have antibodies against specific antibodies against uh, covid-19 specific uh, antibodies against corona this particular coronavirus and this were injected into the patient they were suffering with virus so it is a very very effective way of passive immunization where you give preformed antibodies against a specific antigen right so it is nothing anti serum is nothing but serum that contains antibody against a specific antigen i hope this is easy to understand right when you talk about plasma and serum when you take a sample of plasma and serum normally from a whole blood whatever inherently is present it is present but anti serum is something where you are triggering uh, the uh, synthesis of certain specific antibodies so briefly if i want to put it i will i will put it something like this plasma is a fluid portion of the blood that we understood which contains the fibrinogen this is the key when you want to differentiate between plasma and serum it contains the fibrinogen that means it has the ability to form a clot but serum is something that does not contain fibrinogen so means it is simply plasma devoid of fibrinogen plasma minus fibrinogen so serum is something once the blood has clotted the liquid that you get is serum anti serum is serum that is antibody rich and these antibodies are very specific against our interest of antigen so generally anti serum is it is naturally also produced if a person or if an animal is exposed to a certain antigen or in lab we inject an animal with specific antigen and get the antibodies produced so the monoclonal and polyclonal antibodies against certain antigens we do use this particular anti serum method so that's the difference between plasma serum and anti serum interesting concept to understand especially right now and uh, yeah that's all let me know if you have understood the topic if you have any more doubts reach out to me in comments or uh, in my instagram and i'll try to get back to you and that's all for now i hope this video was helpful do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and until then keep learning